Hey guys, welcome back to The Daily Departure. For those of you new here, I am a Chicago-based flight attendant and I make travel flight attendant and lifestyle videos. If you are new, don't forget to subscribe to The Daily Departure and also hit the bell icon so you get notifications when I'm posting new videos. I'm going to be jumping back into my mini series, So You Want to Be a Flight Attendant, and talking about the topic of pay and how much we make as a flight attendant. I know with pay, everyone wants a straight up number. They want to know a flight attendant makes X amount of dollars per year. And that is just not the case. That is not how this industry works. Again, it can vary all across the board, no matter what airline you work for or how many hours you fly per month. If you Google how much money does a flight attendant make, you are going to most likely get an answer, but it's not necessarily the correct one. So that is why I'm going to be breaking down how much money a flight attendant makes and what that looks like for your schedule and for how much you get paid per hour. And then that additional extra money you get on top called per diem. A disclaimer before I get into the topic of pay, each airline is different. All this information is going to vary depending on which airline you work for, but this is my experience from my airline as well as information based off of knowledge I know about the industry. I will try to give examples throughout the video to help you understand what this looks like as a possible career option for you. Because like with most jobs, you wanna make sure it lines up with your financial plans and see if it works with your lifestyle. As a flight attendant, we get paid per hour and we only get paid once the aircraft door closes. We are not paid during boarding and that usually takes 30 to 50 minutes. I say that range because international flights typically take longer to board. Once everyone is on board, the clock does not begin until the aircraft door is closed. Closed, and the clock keeps running until we land in our final destination and open up the door. The bummer part about the hourly pay is that if a delay occurs, which they oftentimes do, you are not paid for the delay. And if you're sitting around at the airport wasting time for that delay, it may be affecting how much you are getting paid. But on the plus side of the hourly pay, each flight ahead of time is blocked out depending on how long the flight should take to do the parts like taxi, takeoff, landing, the whole flight, as well as landing in the final destination and taxiing to the gate. Which means if you get in earlier than your block time, you still get paid for the amount of time that was pre-blocked out. This could also vary depending on the airline that you work for, but for my airline, that is how it works. And this is really nice because if you have a flight that's blocked at two and a half hours and you get in in two hours, you still get paid that extra 30 minutes. It all ends up evening out between delays and those times where you get in super early. When it comes to your schedule, there are two different terms that we like to use. One being duty time and the other being credit hours. Duty time refers to the amount of time you are on the clock from sign in to sign out. Credit hours refers to the amount of hours you actually earn in pay based on what you are flying. To break this down, for example, you might have a 13 hour duty day, which means you are working for 13 hours straight on the clock at work, but you only get paid for eight hours. That means you were only on the plane with the door closed, flying or taxiing for eight hours. When it comes to hourly pay and how much you can expect to make for a month, typically it is anywhere from 70 to 80 hours. Again, this can vary depending on which airline you work for and what your contract says, but you can kind of estimate around that 70 to 80 hour mark. And the best part about being a flight attendant is that your schedule can be incredibly flexible. So if you don't wanna fly those 70 hours, there is always the option to get rid of some of your hours, drop those hours so that you're flying less as well as pick up. So if you really wanna make some money and you wanna be flying, whether it is to make money or have some fun layovers, you always have the option to pick up on top of your schedule and make more money. Typically, we would consider someone who flies over 100 hours a high time flyer. Sometimes it depends on how much you have going on in your life or how you can really pack your schedule and work it to make those hours fit. You might be able to fly up to maybe 130, 140, 150 hours. And if you're really good about it, you might be able to get even 160, which can be really hard to work into your schedule. I think the most I've ever flown is maybe 
maybe 130 hours and that was very exhausting. For schedule purposes, I'm going to break down the hourly pay and how that correlates to amount of days you are working. Again, depending on which airline you work for, your contract might be different, but with my specific airline, we have a contractual guarantee of five hours per duty day that you will get paid. So this can be beneficial because let's say on the off chance you're flying a two-day trip and you have a duty period the first day and a duty period the second day, you might only fly two hours this day and two hours this day, you will still get paid five for this day and five for this day. To break that down into your schedule and your life, if you are flying 75 hours a month, at five hours a day, that can be accomplished in 15 days. And if you wanted to just fly 75 hours, then that means you have the rest of the month off. Again, this is just the bare minimum of flying where you're only flying five hours a day. As I mentioned before, you could have a 13 hour duty day with eight hours of pay. Let's say you're considering this as a job and you're thinking, ooh, only 75 hours of pay per month. That doesn't seem like a lot. Well, as I mentioned, you can also pick up to earn more money or you can also fly high time trips, which means you are flying more hours in less days. I'm gonna try to break this down to see how it could maybe fit your schedule. Let's say you are flying a two day trip. That's five hours this day and five hours on day two. That is worth 10 hours. Now let's say you pick up a trip that is a high time trip and it's six hours this day and six hours this day, that is 12 hours. You can accomplish flying 12 hours in two days or 10 hours in two days. So there is a potential to have your hours that you're working be more efficient. Now let's span that over the course of a week. Let's say you are doing three two-day trips, all worth 10 hours, that is 30 hours of pay. And the next week you work three two day trips all worth 12 hours. That is 36 hours of pay. For some people, you might rather fly for six days and get paid 30 hours. And for some, you might prefer to get 36 hours of pay for six days. I really hope so far this is making sense to you. I know it can be super confusing. Once you are in the industry and you start flying, you will get a better grasp on it, but I'm trying to explain this for you so that you can see if the amount of maybe hours or days per month that you work can correlate well with your schedule and how much money you would like to make if you choose this career. But with that being said, the hourly rate is not the only amount of money that you make. As a flight attendant, you will also get paid per diem. This is that extra amount of money that you get paid for every trip, and it is calculated by what we call time away from base. And trust me, if you fly a lot of multi-day trips, this per diem can really add up. To break down time away from base, it is from sign in to sign out from the entire amount of your trip, not just duty day. It spans from literally when you get to the airport to start working your trip to when you leave the airport to go home. Let's see how this can look on your schedule. If you have a three day trip that signs in at 8 a.m. and it signs out at 8 p.m. on the last day, that is going to be 60 hours worth of per diem or time away from base. And if you have two of those trips in a month, that is going to be 120 hours. Again, depending on your contract and what airline you work for, your per diem amount can range from maybe let's say $1 to up to $3. So if you work for an airline and you get paid $1.50 per hour of per diem and you are away from base for 120 hours, that is going to be an additional $180 you are getting in your paycheck. Also, I would like to note that per diem on multiple day trips is not taxed. The only part of per diem that is taxed is if you do a one day trip or what we call a turn that is going to be taxed, otherwise it is not taxed, which is super awesome. So technically we do get paid on layovers. When we as flight attendants say, ooh, I'm getting paid for this layover or I'm getting paid to be here, we are technically talking about the per diem that we are getting paid to be away from base. Starting out as a flight attendant, again, depending on what airline you are at, your hourly pay rate is most likely going to be somewhere between 16 and $30 per hour. You might hear this number, and you're like, ooh, wow, that is not a lot of money per hour. And I agree with you, it's really not that much, but the pay scale gets better. At each airline, typically your pay scale will increase with every year that you begin working. For me, I always get a pay raise on my 
anniversary, which is in April. So when you begin, you are on first year pay. Once you hit your first year, you're going to be on second year pay and so on and so forth. Most airlines do have a top out pay and that can vary depending on which airline you work for. For some, it might top out at 13 years and for some airlines, you might top out at maybe 20 years. It really all depends. For some airlines, top out pay might be double or triple what you started at. But basically what that means is that every year you will get a guaranteed raise as long as your contract stays that way. And the only way to make more per hour is if your contract gets renegotiated and your pay rates increase. So basically what I'm saying with that is it does get better and you do see an increase in pay every year that you have been flying and that really is going to help you out because it motivates you to keep flying and keep pursuing your career as a flight attendant. When it comes to pay, typically flight attendants will complain about first year pay or second year pay. And one of the reasons why it sucks is because obviously you're the lowest on the pay scale but the other reason that flight attendants first year and second year pay can really be terrible is because reserve i will be making a video on reserve later on but i will hash out reserve as being on call for the airline that you work for the reason why reserve can really hurt your pay is because if you aren't flying a lot you're missing out on that extra per diem that you're getting per month and sometimes if you fly a lot per diem can end up being 400 or 500 dollars so if you're not flying at all you're losing out a lot on your pay. The good thing about pay in regards to reserve is that, as per my contract at least, we have a minimum guarantee that you do get paid on reserve. So even if you fly no hours at all, you will still get your minimum 75 hours of pay, which is a huge perk of the job if you get so lucky that you don't get used on reserve and you don't mind losing out on that per diem. As everything goes in this industry, seniority means everything. And as seniority increases, your pay will get better, the trips you hold on your schedule will get better, and eventually you you won't have to be on reserve, which is something that I look forward to in the future. I hope this information was helpful to you and gave you some more insight as to what this could look like as a career for you and how this could match your financial goals. If you are interested in being a flight attendant and the pay is really the one thing that you have in question, again, I will say it does get better and sometimes there's things you have to sacrifice in order to have the quality of life that you want or even to have the career that you want. For me personally, this is a job that the negatives are definitely outweighed by the positives. Based on this information, if you have a specific airline that you are looking to apply for and you can figure out how much they make per hour on first year, you can use the minimum hour guarantee and hourly rate to figure out how much you will potentially make per hour and then what that looks like over the course of a month and even a year. And that basically sums up everything there has to do with being a flight attendant and our pay scale. If you are interested in being a flight attendant and you want more information on the application process or just different aspects of the job, you can check out my So You Want to Be a Flight Attendant playlist. I will link it at the end of this video. You can go ahead and check that out. You can also check out my different flight attendant vlogs to see just what it is like living the life of a flight attendant. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Also, don't forget to subscribe subscribe to the daily departure and hit the bell icon so you get notifications when I'm posting new videos. Lastly, if you have any questions in regards to any aspect of being a flight attendant, you can always comment down in the comment section below or also find me on Instagram and feel free to DM me. I always try to answer those flight attendant questions that people have. Hopefully I will see you on the line flying one day. If not, I will see you next time on the daily departure.